Welcome to the Sew Along video for pattern 1725 It's a Wrap Cardigan. A couple of housekeeping things before we get started. I'm going to assume you only have access to a plain sewing machine and an overlocker. For your sewing machine make sure you put a ball needle into it so that we don't cut the yarns as we sew. And make sure the stitch length is lengthened from normal because the longer stitch length looks better in these knit fabrics. With the overlocker, make sure your overlocker is set to 6mm in width, which is quarter of an inch, and you're going to need to make sure you've threaded with four threads of a colour that matches your fabric. So let's get started on the wrap ties. So today I'm going to sew the version, which is the long sleeves with the ribbed cuffs. This version has a bagged out pair of ties, so that means we're cutting two pairs of ties. You can of course adjust this to suit your fabric type, for example if you had a stretch lace and didn't want two layers on the ties, it would be completely fine to just sew a one centimetre, which is a three eighths of an inch seam there. Um, it's just entirely up to you, something like a merino, a 185 GSM you might find too light you may need to bag out the ties. So just use your imagination with this and your judgement but we'll just go ahead and sew the pattern as it's supplied to you. Take one pair of ties and making sure they're right side together place them like this. So this short edge here is the side seam so we don't want to overlock that at the moment. What we're going to do is overlock around the long outside edge. So place that to your overlocker and start overlocking that together. Now there are notches to match down the side, so this is just to make sure this doesn't stretch one way or the other. So just make sure that your notches match as you sew. Now I'm sewing directly on the edge of the fabric. There's no need to cut anything off with your overlocker. We just need to sew on the edge of our fabric. And the fabric I'm sewing today is a winter weight t-shirting, so it's very light. It's also quite curly. Oh, you'll also notice there's been a notch on this side as well um, just to help you make sure this is in the correct place and as you sew make sure that these layers are flat and now just go ahead and repeat that for the other wrap tie Now take your ties and turn them so that the wrong sides are together, the right sides are out. Make sure you push those corners out. So what I'm going to do now is sew an edge stitch around this uh, tie piece. You don't have to. Um, 
I like to make sure it sits down nice and flat, entirely up to you, but I'm going to sew an edge stitch around about quarter of an inch, five millimeters from the edge of my overlocking. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that overlocking's fully pushed out and sitting on the side, and I'm going to sew here. Stop just before you get to the end, turn and pivot, stop and turn and pivot, and then sew back. So it's a good idea to press that um, and go ahead and repeat for the other tie. So we're going to start by working on the cuff. Now this is ribbing and I've chosen to sew this in ribbing but you certainly can use this cut in the same as your main fabric if you want to. The main thing you have to make sure is the stretch goes this way across. The other thing you might need to do is just to check that that cuff is a good width for you and adjust this width to suit. So what we're going to do is take our cuff, fold it right sides together and if you're like me and you've got um, stripes we need to make sure we match those stripes and I should really be changing my overlocking thread to match but I'm not going to. So what we're going to do is overlock that edge there. And you'll notice there's a notch directly opposite the seam we've just sewn. Now if you don't have one, make sure you make one now because it's going to make sewing in our sleeve much easier, sewing our cuff to our sleeve. So when you've done that, what we're going to do is put our hand inside the cuff and turn it back on itself. Make sure that those notches sit on top of each other and that the seam sits on top of each other. And just go ahead and repeat that for the other cuff. Now we're going to sew the sleeve and I've just jumped ahead and done it but what I've done is fold a sleeve right sides together and just overlocked that long underarm seam. So when you've done that repeat that for the other sleeve piece and then take your cuff and slot that inside the sleeve lower edge, the sleeve wrist area. So what we want to do is make sure that these seams on the ribbed cuff match with the underarm seam on the sleeve and the two notches I spoke about earlier on our cuff match to the notch on the sleeve 
hem um, wrist area as well. So what we're going to do, because I have this wonderful attachment here to help me sew cuffs, is to overlock that all together. Now I don't like to start on the seam when I'm overlocking cuffs because it just gives it a little bit more bulk, well my personal opinion only. What I'm going to do is just making sure everything is nice and evenly eased through, is to overlock that edge together. Now you will find it easier if your cuff is on the inside, but certainly if you find it more comfortable to sew it with the cuff on the outside, that's fine too. Just make sure your right sides are together when you sew this, because there's nothing worse than trying to unpick overlocking. So as you approach at the bulk of the seams here, just let the overlocker cut off the previous overlocking thread. And sometimes it's a good idea to make sure the seams all sit in different directions, just to reduce some of the bulk through there. Okay, trim off your threads um, and repeat that for the other sleeve. Now we're going to start sewing the body of the garment. Now this is the back piece here. So if you have the wrap piece with the right side on top, you have to leave a gap in the right seam. Now generally with women's garments it's right over left, but with wrap garments because you wrap two layers there's a bit of an issue as which is the first one to put down. But generally with a wrapped garment we put the left side under and the right side over. So have I confused you? I don't know. What we're going to do, take the back piece and overlock up through the side seam on the left side. That's the left side as if you were wearing it. Then go ahead and overlock through the right side, that's the right side as if you're wearing it. Now I've let the notches be seen on both sides but when you overlock on the right side you need to make sure that the notches in the side seam are visible through your overlocking because that's going to show us where to leave the opening for our wrap tie to pass through. So now take your left front and overlock this side seam here. And then do the same with the uh, right front piece. What we're going to do is overlock the side seam here. and make sure you can see those notches through the overlocking. So now we need to sew the side and leave the gap between our notches for our ties to pass through. So place your back right side up, and we're going to work on the right side, and then Get your right wrap piece and place it right side down and match that side seam together. Match the edges and what we're going to do is sew a seam at one centimetre which is three eighths of an inch. Remember to back tack at the beginning and at the end too. And you need to, uh, you need to stitch all the way down until you find that top notch and then what I want you to do is stop and back tack directly to the side of it. So stitch through there and you should be able to see your notch through the overlocking. What we're going to do is stitch and stop directly opposite it 
stop with your needle down and back tack and then clip off your threads. Now we're, what we're going to do is find the next notch We're going to start sewing directly opposite the notch. Remember to back tack all the way through to the hem area. And back tack to finish. So that will leave us a nice gap to put our tie through. So what we need to do to secure that open is to top stitch that. Now I like to do this from the rear of my garment but you can do it from the front if you prefer and it's up to you which or how deep you want to sew this but what I'm going to do is sew probably six mil which is a um, quarter of an inch around this. So I'm starting a quarter of an inch below here. I'm just going to follow this line up. I'm going to go to a quarter of an inch past that. I'm going to stop and pivot. I'm going to stitch directly through to another quarter of an inch on the other side. Turn and pivot. And down again. Come down a quarter of an inch past. Six mils. Turn and pivot. Across. One more stitch. And then I'm just going to join my stitches together and back tack and remember to do some quality control work and just trim those threads off. Now it's a good idea to go ahead and press that seam open and you should be left with a, um, a nice stitched opening there for your tie that's nice and secure. Okay so now we're going to stitch in the other seam and this one's very straightforward because we can do a centimeter allowance the whole way. We don't have to worry about leaving an opening in this side. What we're going to do is just match those seams and it's up to you whether you want to sew them from the armhole to the hem or the hem to the armhole. Just remember to back tack at the beginning and edge and make sure all the raw edges are even. Now certainly feel free if you don't like the right side being on top to just reverse everything that I've said and leave the gap in the left side. And back tack at the end. Right. So while I'm here I'm going to sew the shoulder seam on this side and this is going to sew also at one centimeter which is three-eighths of an inch and I'm going to match the shoulder seam on the other side Now I'm going to go to the overlocker and just tidy up that top edge. So I'm just going to overlock on the edge of that shoulder seam to tidy it up. So go back to your iron and press this other seam open. We want them sitting nice and flat like this. So why I'm, while I'm here I'm going to overlock this um, neck edge because it's an easy time to do it. So off you go. When you get to the shoulder area make sure that seam faces towards the back neck area. It's 
So I'd just like to make a comment about the way we're going to finish the front and the neckline, well the whole neckline of this garment. So what we're going to do is turn it under and stitch it down. So you could use a cover stitcher or a twin needle or just a row of stitching with your plain machine. Now the reason I've done it this way is some people prefer to put a um, cuffed band here. Um, the reason we haven't done that because it's a very much a home sewing technique. You wouldn't find a band in a commercially made garment. Generally they'd be turned and stitched. Saying that if you want to change the pattern to create a band because you're uncomfortable in some way of finishing this edge, you can do it. So how do you go about doing it? So what you'll need to do is take your pattern piece and draw a parallel line to this edge here two centimeters in. Now two centimeters is pretty close to three quarters of an inch. So your new cut line on both the fronts would be three quarters of an inch here and you'd also do that on the back neck edge. So your neck edge would be three quarters of an inch, two centimeters shorter. Then you need to create a band piece. So the band piece to create that fold up here, just like a ribbed cuff, will need to be 5.2 centimeters wide so that's two and one eighth of an inch and it needs to um, run from, you need to cut it from salvage to salvage so the grain line needs to run through the short edge and the length of it needs to be the length of your front neck on the right, your front neck on the left and your back neck so that's the new cut line excluding seam allowances so you'll need to come in quarter of an inch six mils as well. So just to give you a very quick diagram, I'm sorry it's so rough but it will help you if you want to create that folded band in the front. So on both of these front pieces you would make it two centimeters in and same on the back and then your band would look similar to this. So let's start an on a sleeve. So turn one of the sleeves so it's right side out and what you'll notice is there's a notch that runs directly opposite the underarm seam so that's the top arm line notch. That notch needs to match to the shoulder on our garment and as you go around you'll find two more notches on the side. So the double notches will show us which is the back of our garment. So with our sleeve right side out come to your garment and make sure it's right side in. So now it's just a matter of making sure the sleeve you have matches the side of the garment that you have. So this sleeve here for me matches the right side of our garment. So what I'm going to do is place my sleeve into the garment and I'm going to match the underarm seams. Now making sure the body seam is open, I'm going to match that seam to the seam, oh, excuse me, I'm going to use some pins, to the seam of the sleeve. And I'm just going to pin that in place to hold it. Then I'm going to find that single notch, which is one we're going to match to the shoulder, and I'm going to pin that to my body of my garment, shoulder seam there. Next I'm going to find where my double notches were and match those together. Notice I'm pinning within the seam allowances just in case my pins make any holes in my fabric um, that will hold it in place. Right so I'm now going to sew the sleeve into the armhole. I'm going to start just short of the underarm seam on one side, so maybe four inches, 10 centimeters up. So, and I always like to sew this with my sleeve on the inside. Make sure you remove the pins as you go because if you sew over them you will break your needles. So 
So I'm just going to overlock just past that double notch and stop. When I reach this position here, I'm going to find the next notch that I'm working towards, which is the shoulder notch. And I'm going to reposition my work, making sure any ease and that seam is nice and evenly stretched between the double notch and the shoulder notch. And I'm going to stop just after that notch, reposition my work. Make sure the ease is evenly distributed again. And continue on round to my starting point. And so now I'm going to repeat that for the other sleeve. So because we're at the overlocker, let's just overlock our hem into position. Well, overlock the edge of it, I mean. Remember when you get to these seams we want to make sure that they're open and just let that overlocker cut off our um, straight our threads from before. Now it's time to sew our ties into position. So this is the side of the front. So take the side of the front, place it right side up and find one of your ties and place it to it. So what you will find is sometimes this tie piece can grow in width and sometimes this piece can shrink. So if it's extremely bad, you might need to adjust your pattern. Sometimes it just depends on the fabric. You could actually cheat and cut a little bit of width off here, which isn't to be recommended, but you know, sometimes we have to do these things. But what we need to do is we need to sew this tie to this side and then the other side. So the best way to get a nice finish around here is, now this is patterned for a one centimeter seam allowance, but you might end up doing it quarter of an inch, six mil. Place the tie like this and wrap this piece, which is the side front, over the top. And we're going to sew at one centimetre, which is three eighths of an inch. Now just sew a small piece there because what we need to do is stretch this out and do the same thing at the other edge. We're going to wrap it around. Once you have that into position, distribute the fullness on that edge, making sure all the raw edges are even, and sew it down. And now I'm going to go back to my overlocker and tidy that edge up. So um, as you can see that's caused a teeny bit of gathering, it's um, not too bad, it might press out. So just, just be aware of that, depending on the fabric you might need to either adjust um, the seam allowance on the ties or you might need to just cut this slightly wider. So um, that is very much fabric dependent too. So go ahead now and overlock that edge to tidy that up and then repeat the tie on the other side. So here is my tie overlocked. So what this turnaround does is it gives us a nice smooth transition from the front um, on that neck edge and the hem edge too. So next thing to do is um, to sew in. We'll start on the hemline. So I like to sew my hems from the bottom but it's entirely uh, from the back I mean. It's entirely up to you. What I do like to do is just trim my overlocking thread back to an inch, two and, two and a half centimeters, and just tuck that in so you can't see it. Now this is um, 
patterned for a one centimeter hem allowance. Um, clearly in my sewing I haven't quite got a centimeter so what I'm going to do is just graduate it up from starting at my tie with sewing which I remember was six mils quarter of an inch. I'm just going to turn this back up and graduate it back up to what it should be which is one centimetre. And I'm continuing to sew around the bottom of my garment. So one centimetre is three eighths of an inch and I just want to make sure that that is turned up. The um, seams are sitting directly on top of each other. And I'm sewing directly through my overlocking line. Of course you could twin needle this or um, cover stitch this if you have a machine. Now because on the other side um, I was slightly out, I'm just going to graduate that back again on this side so that it looks the same and I'm going to tuck my excess cover st um, overlocking thread into that seam allowance. Right, so when you've done the hem edge, now's the time to do the uh, neckline edge exactly the same way. Um, one centimetre, three eighths of an inch is allowed for. Um, I'm going to um, just make sure, because my stitching was a little bit odd, sorry about that, that I'm going to start this on top of um, my top stitching of my ties. And now I'm just going to graduate it very quickly but smoothly out to one centimetre. Now I normally wouldn't sew with the bulk of my work on the side, but I just want to keep an eye on it. Now if you have a problem sewing edges like this, feel free to use um, some stabiliser tape. I don't tend to use it, but you could. Or you could even use something like Mobilon, which is clear elastic on the seam if you feel it needs it for stabilizing around the neck edge just depending on your fabric that you've chosen.
so go ahead and give your garment a final press. Um, we've now finished our wrap cardigan. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy your garment and please join me again for my next sew along video.